name we praise you. Let every heart say amen. 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 Y'all smile. Amen. There we go. Amen. Smile. All right. Now we can do this. We got some smiles in the congregation. I'm going to read one verse, verse 3, and then we'll launch into today's teaching. The Bible says, And if I send them away fasting to their own houses, they will faint. If I send them away to their own houses, they will they'll, they'll faint, God. If I send them away, they'll faint. Y'all hear that? That's what the word says. If I send them away, they'll faint. Y'all ready to write this down? Let me write this down. You need something to write on? You need something to write on? Raise your hand. Somebody get you something. All right. Y'all ready for the teaching? Mm hmm. Amen. If I send them away to their own houses, Amen. they'll faint. All right. All right. Today's tag for today's teaching is Feed Me or I'll Faint. All right. All right. Feed Me or I'll Faint. Robert Augustus Masters was a well-known psychotherapist and healing professional said this. He said, there is a wisdom in the body, a wisdom in feeling that when accessed and allowed to operate in conjunction with our cognitive capacities leads to a deeper, wiser, more integrated life. Don't catch that. Let me read it. Let me say it again. He said, there is a wisdom built into your body. All right? It's a wisdom of feeling that when you access it and you allow that to operate in conjunctive with your brain, you're thinking about it. Y'all hear me? Mm -hmm. It can lead to a deeper, wiser, in other words, you'll be more healthy. Yes, sir. All right. Y'all catch that? Yes, sir. And so I'm going to suggest today, and I'm going to argue that there is also a wisdom in the spirit. Yeah. That when you access it, and when you allow it to operate in conjunction with your cognitive capacities, it will lead to a deeper, wiser, more integrated life as well. All right. Y'all catch that? So, so what's good for the body? is also good for the spirit. And so just like your body communicates to you in silent whispers, and as y'all know it's like, your body communicates with you in silent aches, yeah. in silent pain. Yeah. Anybody ever have to get up slowly? Yeah. Right? Anybody ever have your children in the house? Anybody ever have your children in the house? And yeah, I said, let's, that, the daddy, uh, like my said, dad, let's go throw the football. And I said, okay, let's go. And he's out the door and I'm still getting up. <laughs> That's a silent whisper. <laughs> Y'all don't know what you mean. That's a silent whisper. Yeah, silent whisper like aches and pains. And, and most of some of y'all got silent whispers in your gut. Ooh, that don't feel right. That's a silent whisper. Some of y'all, y'all operate on the unction of the Holy Spirit. That gut that tells you, don't do that. Don't eat that. Don't go there. You know, okay, y'all tripping that last piece of pie. Just because it's there don't mean it's there for you to eat it. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying today? And so your spirit communicates to you in similar ways. Don't eat that when I'm praying for that. Don't, don't eat that when I'm praying over that. Y'all hear what I'm saying? Your spirit be talking to me with it. Oh, y'all had the spirit say, Y'all ever had a sign of witness say, He whispered to you. And people look at you like, who are you talking to? You talk to that silent whisper. Shouldn't maybe I shouldn't because it's a message. It's a signal. Somebody said it's a sign. Are y'all catching this? And if you ignore the message, the signal, 
the sign, the whisper. If you ignore it, it can usher stress in your life. And if you and if, and if you be truthful about it, I got I don't know if I got any medical folk up in here, but it can also it can also release some toxin in, into your body. Y'all catch this? Some toxins into your body. Your 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 le- the levels of chemicals in your body go haywire when you don't listen to the signals and the signs that the Holy Spirit in your body is starting to send you. And it can become just like taking a match and striking a match. You know that you can strike one little match and start a forest fire. Yeah, that's what it's like when you don't listen to what the Spirit is telling you. It's like light a match to start a forest fire that can take off and permeate your body overnight. So if you ignore, whether it be the body or the soul, you're susceptible to disease. You're susceptible to illness. And somebody knows you are susceptible to death. Y'all catch me? And so just think about, listen, think about all the things in your life that can go wrong when you're empty. I had to think about this. I said, what are some of the things that stop working when they get empty? Are y'all ready? Your happiness stops when your marriage gets empty. Don't say nothing. Don't look left and right. All right? Don't look, don't look left and right. Everybody don't think about it. You stop paying your bills when your bank account gets empty. You stop eating when your cabinets get empty. Are y'all hearing me? Yes, sir. Your car starts stops running when your gas tank gets empty. I'm just trying to make this plain, y'all. Your progress stops when your vision gets empty. Your life stops when your heart gets empty. Are y'all catching this? I'm just trying to make this thing plain for us today. And so believe it or not, your spirit man also stops working when it gets empty too. Right. I know. Because when your when your spirit is empty, when your, your spirit stops, and, and, and when your spirit is empty, here's what happens. You stop believing in the power of God. Y'all catching this? You stop expecting God to do what only God can do. You stop trusting in the Lord with all your heart. You start leaning to your own understanding. In all the ways you don't acknowledge him. And he stops correcting your path. That's 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 the J-E-G version. Y'all hear me? You stop praying. You start worrying about stuff that you ain't got no business worrying about. This is when your spirit gets empty. All of a sudden, stuff starts falling out your mouth and work at folk that done, that done talked about you. And here's what I know. The people that done talked about you, they talk about other people too. So why you got to be the one that go cussing and fussing and fighting and want to be arguing and arguing and stuff. You want to storm out and whatnot. Yeah, they lie on you. Guess what? They lie on other people too. Why you got to be the one? I know why you the one, because you empty. Are y'all catching this? You empty. And so it's because you're empty, and when you don't get fed, you faint. You fall. You, 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 you lean over. You kill over. You throw in the towel. You quit. You get up. When you are hungry or you are empty. Are y'all catching this? Yeah, yeah. But, but, but. I need somebody to tell your neighbor, say, neighbor, yeah. stay, with Jesus stay with Jesus when you're empty. When you empty. Tell your other neighbor, say, other neighbor, stay with, stay with Jesus when you're empty. When you're empty. Yeah. Why do I know? I'm right here in the book. It says in, in Mark chapter 8, Jesus recognizes that the multitudes which had followed him are now empty. Y'all catch that? Am I in the Bible? Yeah. He recognizes that they are now empty empty. Okay? Now, they begun to display the signs of hunger. But here's the real deal. It was 4,000 y'all do the math. It was 4,000 men, not counting women and children. Right? Right. But here's the deal. They have traveled so far that <laughs> they've traveled so far that they can't really get back. Okay? Without <coughs> thinking about Man, we've come so far, 
that is really too far for us to go back unless we deal with what we're facing right now. Are y'all catching that? Okay, y'all get it. Here's what I mean. Uh, uh, and my wife's gonna laugh about this. She know I'm about to say that. She gonna laugh about this. But when we got married, 25, about 25 years ago, we got married. And when we, uh, when we got married, uh, we moved to a place called Colorado Springs. Yeah, yeah. It's a far away place. Yeah. <laughs> and, 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 and here's the deal. When, when you get married and, and you drive 17 hours away from everybody, <clears throat> you came to one home when you get upset. Are y'all catching this? So I, so, so I had to think about what I was going to say to her daddy when I said, oh yeah, we get married. Oh, and by the way, we moving 17 hours away. Y'all not catching that, right? Because you think about that. He, he has to think about, her mother has to think about, my daughter is too far for me just to jump in the car and be there in a minute. I'm on my way. I'll see you in a minute. I'm coming. Just wait. Come on over here. Here I come. No, you got to wait another day. Yeah. All right, but that's not what I really want to talk about. I'm just, I'm just, I'm just talking there parenthetically. Let me point this one out. So we got married. We moved 17 hours away and had the nerve to have our first argument. <laughs> but I want y'all to know that our first argument was about church, okay? Our first argument was about church. Oh, argue about something. Argue about Jesus, right? Did he say that? No, he didn't say that. Did Jesus say that? Is that what Jesus did? No, let's look at the Word of God and see what he said. I'll see, I told you. That's what he said. So we had an argument about church. Uh -huh. And I got so mad couldn't go home. <laughs> home is too far. Uh -huh. Y'all not. I, I'm in the Bible. So she'll tell you, I left the apartment and just started walking. And I guess I love to walk. Because before long, I had walked all the way to the airport. But God did what God was doing. I got so far that I realized I can't walk that far. <laughs> so I had to go to a pay phone. We didn't have cell phones back then. I had to go to a pay phone and call my wife and say, baby. Hey, I think I walked too far. You wouldn't mind coming and get me, would you? And I was sweet pie and sugar dumplings in there. But sometimes, sometimes it's like that. You got to think about how far you are and what it's going to take to get back. And Jesus recognized that these folk are empty, but they come too far to turn back now. Y'all hear me? Y'all catching this? I'm just trying to make this thing plain, y'all. I'm really just trying to make this plain, thing plain. And so these people, they done started, they so far, but they done started to show the signs of hunger. And, and, and if you imagine, do the math, if 4,000 men without women and children being counted, then that would, would stand to reason that while they were walking, some folk got hungry and fell off. Some folks said, hey, 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 hey. I feel this Jesus dude. But if ain't no McDonald's around, and ain't no KFC around, I tell you what, we gonna disembark, we gonna disengage, two fingers, I see you wouldn't want to be. And so they turned around and went back home. Stay with Jesus. Are y'all catching this? Y'all better stay with Jesus. Are y'all catching this? And so what's most important is the 4,000 of those who stayed. Are you this? Yeah, yeah. Is there anyone in here who knows how important and how impactful it is when you are able to stay with Jesus when you're empty? I hate this. My brain just be going crazy. Anybody ever, uh, anybody ever uh, go to the 25th anniversary uh, class reunion? 35th, 30, 35th. 30, 30, 
you go and you ain't been, you ain't seen your folk in a long time. You go to the family, you go to a class reunion, and, and you see somebody, they come and say, hey, hey, baby. <laughs> you look at them, and you're like, and, it, you, and in your mind, you want to roll it next to your mind, like, who? Who's this? Right? And y'all know how you do you look at the eyes. Hey! And you're doing all that right, you're trying to see, hey! Who is this? Man, remember when this, and remember when that. And you're like, yeah! And you, in, the, in your mind, you like running through it. Like, what, when, how, who, what, when, how, huh? And then you remember, I dated this person. Well, well, well. And you can't wait to get to the bathroom so you can go. If Jesus expects these people to remain strong, if he 
if they expect these people to remain with them, they must be fed. Because empty people will get tired, empty people will stumble, empty people will get impatient, empty people will get frustrated, empty people will become weary. And my Bible says, let my Bible says, let us not be weary in well doing. Doing because in due season will what reap if we faint. I didn't make that up. Y'all catching this? So I know I got some people in here right now. I know I got some people right right now. You are empty right now. Maybe maybe your purpose is empty. Maybe your vision is empty. Maybe your expectations are empty. Maybe your goals are empty. Maybe your heart is empty. Maybe your relationships are empty. Whatever is empty in your life, don't faith stay with. Why? Because that's the best, best place to be when you're out here. It's with Jesus. Watch this. God knows, God knows that hunger is a regulatory function. Amen. Yeah. Right. True. True. Right. Come on. Yeah. All right. Right. One of y'all have lunch? <laughs> 12 o'clock. Mm-hmm. Monday through Friday. Yeah. I know because whenever I go to a restaurant, I'm going to try not to go at 12. Right? Dinner, 6 o'clock. 5 o'clock, 6 o'clock, 7 o'clock. I know, because when I try to go to Cheesecake Factory, the wait is longer at that time. Because hunger is a regulatory exercise. Y'all following this? Jesus is upset. So all Jesus is addressing is the fact that the people are empty, and if we don't feed them, they will faint. He understands that hunger is a regulatory function that must be satisfied. In other words, things begin to go wrong biologically, they go wrong psychologically, and they go wrong, they go wrong spiritually when you do not satisfy your desire to be fed. Right. Right. I know I'm right about it. Get addicted to something. And don't feed your addiction. Hello? Right? You ever see some addicted folk? Y'all see some folk, they gotta have so many cigarettes at a certain time. Right? They can't do certain things until they do certain things. Am I by myself? You ever see an alcoholic? You ever see somebody withdraw? When you get addicted to something, it becomes a regulatory function. Meaning that you can't keep going until you feed that addiction. Right? Some of y'all, you got an addiction to, to arguments. Meaning that if you ain't had an argument lately, you're looking for an argument. You're looking for somebody to step on your shoes. You're looking for somebody to brush up against you. You're looking for somebody to get on your last nerve. Why? Because, you, because arguing is a regulatory function in your life. Oh, I know I'm right about it. There's some folks that will look for a fight when don't no fight exists. Because fighting is a regulatory function for them. And if you don't, if you don't feed it, stuff don't go haywire. All right, but not only that, Jesus also understands that the regularity of feeding your hunger has a tendency to alter your behavior. Amen. Get hungry, you gonna slow down. Get hungry, you gonna get angry. You are gonna be frustrated. Get hungry, people can't talk to you the same way. Am I right about it? Y'all know something like that? Oh no, don't raise your hand. Right. When you get hungry, stuff changes in you biologically because you need to feed what is hungry. And so over time, we develop and we learn healthy and unhealthy responses to being empty. And it takes extreme circumstances to keep someone from ignoring the natural proclivity to satisfy your hunger. Some of y'all can't hear me right now because your hunger is screaming louder than my sermon. That ain't funny. That ain't funny. And I'm going to tell you why that ain't funny. Some of you cannot hear me because your stomach is speaking louder than I am. And John Mark, the writer of the book of Mark, is pointing out that these people are, these people are with Jesus and they are ignoring their hunger pain because they realize that they are witnessing extreme circumstances. Are y'all catching this? So, so it is possible 
It is possible to exist physically hungry because you're in extreme circumstances. Are y'all catching this? Anybody ever seen somebody go off and climb a mountain and get lost or something happens and they got to stay out there and you wonder how they survive and they're able to survive for two or three days without without any food and they take walk, they take the ice and stuff and they drip it down and they drink that and that's all they got or they ration their food and you wonder how do they survive? They survive because they had to kick in a mentality to believe that they can survive even though they're in extreme circumstances. Y'all hear what I'm saying? Anybody ever heard of somebody who got attacked by a lion or whatever? I heard a guy got attacked by an elephant. The elephant spirit him, opened him up. He was bleeding everywhere, but what was inside of him was so strong that he was able to kick in his survival instinct in extreme circumstances. And I know I'm looking at some folks who know something about extreme circumstances. You ever had to feed a whole family while you was in the middle of some of extreme circumstances? I'm talking to the right people. Extreme churches. And God has a word for you because that's what you need when you are in extreme circumstances. You need something that's been injected in your ear, injected in your spirit that can allow you to survive even though the situation says you should. Says you should die. Lay down. Give it up. But you're saying, no, I'm not going to give up because of the word of God. I don't know about you, but I need God's word when I face extreme circumstances. And if you who have experienced the power of God's word, let not your heart be troubled. Do you know what I'm saying? If you're under the sound of my voice and you have experienced God's grace, rejoice. And again, I say rejoice. If you've experienced God's healing, all things work together for the good of them who love the Lord and are called according to his purpose. If you have experienced his mercy, oh magnify the Lord with me. Let us exalt his name together. Then when you experience it, nothing will keep you from getting a word in extreme circumstances. So what is the multitude surviving on three days? In extreme circumstances, they're surviving on the fact that not only do they have a word, they are surviving because the word is with them. Yeah. Look, I got some Bible readers here. The word is with them. And, and not only is the word with them, they saw that Jesus, the word, had a response to their circumstance. Are y'all ready for this? Write this down. Y'all ready for this? It's in the book of Mark. This is what Jesus does. The Bible says that he has a word. How does he have a word? He has a word because he, the Jesus healed a man with a skin disease in Mark 1. Jesus healed a paralyzed man in Mark 2. Jesus calmed the raging sea in Mark 4. Jesus performed an exorcism of a man with many evil spirits in Mark 5. Jesus raised up Jairus' dead daughter in Mark 5. Jesus healed the hemorrhage woman in Mark 5. Jesus said 5,000 in Mark 6. Jesus walked on water in Mark 6. Jesus healed a deaf and new man in Mark 7. And now I'm hungry. And you mean to tell me that this man who just healed some folk, who just raised some folk, who just straightened out some folk, who just exercised some folk, can, can feed me too? Somebody said, yes, he can. Yes, he can. Yeah. They were physically a day. But their hunger for more of Jesus was more important than physical love. In other words, they were so impressed by what Jesus was doing that they were surviving off of his healing and not surviving off of their hunger. So, in other words, Jesus here is not just teaching us about physical hunger and limitations. He's also making reference to our spiritual limitations. When your spirit gets empty, God says it's time to get fed. But the problem with your feet is that you don't have control over the supply. Praise God, I don't have control over the supply. Thank God I don't have a super, I don't have a because if, if I had, hey, hey, y'all get downstairs and the food run out, don't call me. 
I don't have control over the supply. Y'all hear what I'm saying? Yes, sir. Don't put me in charge of the kitchen, y'all. Don't put me in charge. I don't have control over the supply. But what do you do when you're empty on the word of God? God says, when you're empty spiritually, I'm the one that will then feed you with the word that you need. Oh, I ain't talking about them empty calories that y'all eat called Twinkies. No. Yeah, you can eat Twinkies if you want to, and you can get full, but it ain't going to do nothing for you. Y'all hear me? So here's what I mean by that. Here's what I mean by that. Y'all better stick with this one right here. Here's what I mean by that. You might be hungry for a position. But God's going to feed you because he knows you need patience. You might be here right now and you might be hungry for a husband. You might be hungry for a wife. You might be hungry for a companion. But Jesus says what you really need is I need to feed you with self-esteem. Do I have a witness in here? Right? You may be hungry for a job, but Jesus says that's not what you really need. I need to feed you with the gift of wisdom. And the only way you can get what you really need is by being fed by the Word of God. Somebody say the Word of God. Word of God. And you're not in control of the supply. That's why the Bible said, our Word said, your Word said, how then can they call on the one they have not believed in? And how can they believe in the one of whom they have not heard? And how can they hear without someone preaching to them? And how can anyone preach unless they be sent? That's why, in order for me to give you the word, I better be sick, and I bet not just win. You can't control the supply. When you're hungry spiritually, you ain't in control of the supply. God will supply your needs because he knows your needs. God will supply what you, and he don't just supply some of them. Somebody knows he'll supply all your needs. Oh, you're risen, you're all right. Am I by myself? And so, I'm almost done in verse 4. The disciples asked him, okay, Lord, I see that we need to feed these folk or they're going to faint. But here's the problem. How in the world do they expect us to satisfy these men with bread while we're here in the wilderness? Y'all see that in your word? Yes, sir. In verse 4. And so, so the, the disciples suggest that there's no earthly way we can feed this many people because we are in the wilderness. We are here with wild things. Well, yeah. Right? How we gonna feed these folks? Ain't no McDonald's, ain't no Blue Chris, right? Ain't, 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 ain't no, ain't, ain't, what's that place? Ain't no Chick Fil A, right? All in long line. Ain't no Chick Fil A, ain't no Taco Bell, ain't no Old Charlie's. We in the wilderness, y'all. Anybody ever been like that? Yeah. Right? Don't pass that exit, cause you ain't gonna have another exit. Anybody ever been there? And yeah. like, how we gonna get back? Lord Jesus, we should have put. I missed the exit. Here's how he does it. Are y'all ready? Ready. Jesus understands that you can be fed while you're in the wilderness. Yeah. The disciples see what the, the, the disciples see. Here's how he does it. The disciples see what they don't have. But Jesus sees what they do have. Did y'all see that? Am I missing it? He, he, he said, they said, from whence can a man satisfy these men with bread here in the wilderness? Jesus don't even trust that. He don't even say the word wilderness again. Mm -hmm. He goes straight to Africa. He asks them, how many loaves do you have? Yeah. <laughs> he said, how many loaves do you have? He said, what you got? Isn't that like Jesus? Isn't that like Jesus to ignore when you cry? Jesus, I got no job. I need a job. Ooh. And Jesus, and Jesus said, uh, how many hands and how many feet you got? He said, I know they didn't hire you, but you can't hire yourself. Jesus, I need a husband and I need a wife. Jesus said, you can't get along with yourself. How is it you going to get along with somebody else? God, I need a five-bedroom house. Lord, I need 5,000 square foot. I've been saving. And Lord said, you ain't taking care of the one bedroom of the efficiency you got right now. Lord, Does not matter what you don't have. What do you 
said, he said, he said what, what do you have? And they said, we got seven loaves. He said, how many loaves do you got? They said, we got seven. And somebody here know. Somebody here know. Sometimes God is not a provider. Uh-huh. I think so. Just, just shout for me on this one. Okay? You shout for me on this one. Sometimes God ain't a provider. I got to ask somebody to shout because I know it's this. I got to ask somebody. That's what some people do. Make y'all shout. Could you shout for me on this one? He said, sure. Sometimes God is not a provider. You know what God is? A reminder. Hey, hey, wow. I don't know Thank you for just the one. Can I get somebody who God did provide? He just reminded you that he provided. You want to be Jehovah Rapha. You want to be Jehovah Nisi. You want to be Jehovah Shishkanu. Why don't you just be Jehovah that reminds us that you woke up this morning and that he started you on your way and that you got breath in your body and that you know your name and that you can live in your home. Even though your physical needs have not been met, yet your spiritual needs have been met. 
So how do you get fed what you need so that you won't fast? Look at verse 6, and I'm done. Here it is, number one. The very first thing you need. If you're going to get fed in the wilderness, what you need must cost you. The Bible says he took seven loaves. Somebody say he took it. Yeah, and you got to get this. There are some things in your life that God says in order for you to move to the next level, you got to sacrifice some stuff. And what that means is, is you got to continue to come into worship and not be a part of the first church of the frozen chosen and sacrifice praise by lifting up your holy hand. Somebody say sacrifice. Give it up. Yeah, there's some stuff that you used to do. God said it's time for you to stop doing that. It's time to sacrifice that. It's time to put that thing on the altar and leave it there. There's some stuff you used to say, you need to sacrifice that. Yeah, all them expected things that you took about your mouth, it's time for you to sacrifice that. You need to crucify that stuff. Yeah. The word of God says, he took it. Somebody say, he took it. Yeah. Number two, the next thing you need is, is that once, once God takes you, the Bible says, he must bless you. Excuse me, you must bless God. Don't get don't make me make me make. I can't make no mistakes. You must bless God with what God is blessing you with. Am I right about it? Is that what it says? It says, and he gave thanks. He blessed it. Some folks understand it like this. Be anxious for nothing, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your request be made known unto God. That means whatever you need, so long as you ask for it with thanksgiving. And giving thanks, God is able to give you what you need. Do I have a witness in here? He, he may not come when you want it, but somebody knows he'll be there right on time. And the third thing, I'm out of y'all here. The third thing, the third thing, the first thing is he took it. The second thing is he gave thanks for it. The third thing is he broke it and gave it. Woo, Jesus. He broke it and gave it. Somebody said he gave it. What does that mean? That means that that means that there are some things that God cannot use in your life, cannot give you unless you first are willing to break it. Y'all do remember the woman who had who had the alabaster box? Y'all remember that? Did I preach about that? Just like me? No, I didn't. Okay, I just didn't think about it. <laughs> there was a woman. There was a woman. Jesus is in the book of Mark because I talked about it when we was going through uh, when we were going through uh, uh, Resurrection Sunday. I talked about it as I was coming down. I talked about the fact that this woman came up to Jesus named Mary and she had this alabaster box. This box that had some precious ointment in it. And they said they said in the Bible they said that in the Bible uh, uh, she comes to Jesus and she breaks the box and she pours this very valuable ointment on Jesus. Did y'all hear what I'm saying? Now here's the question that you must ask about breaking. Are y'all ready for this? You must ask the question, how is it that something that is, I don't know about you, but if I got a lot of money, I'm not going to put it in a place where it's easy to break into. Do I have a witness? Right? If I got something that's valuable, I'm going to put it behind the safe and put the safe behind the safe and put that safe behind the safe. Do you hear If it's valuable, then it should not be that easy to be broken into. Are you So you must ask the question, if what was in the alabaster box was so valuable, how come it was so easy? For her to break it. Well, let me help you out. The reason why it was so easy for her to break it is because she knew that she must break it to bless God because, because God had to break her so that he could bless her. Do I have, do I have a witness in there? You got to understand that in order for you to get blessed, sometimes you got to be broken. That's some stuff that's got to break in your life. And there's a lot of things in your life that you don't get because you're not willing to be broken. So he took it. He blessed it. He broke it. And then somebody said he gave it. He gave it. And so maybe that's why the songwriter, y'all know this song, the songwriter wrote these words, Margaret DeRoe. She said, she said, give me a clean heart. So I may serve thee. She said, Lord, fix my heart so that I May be what? You, right? Of thee. And then she goes on to say, For I'm not worthy of all of thee. Come on, y'all know this song. Of all of these, what? Blood, and, 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 see. Please say, Give me a clean heart, and I'll follow thee. And I want to follow God. I'm done. I want to follow God. And, and the reason why I want to, I'm done. I'm done. I'm y'all off the hook. I'm going to leave y'all alone. I'm done. I'm done. I, ain't no three points in the hoop, y'all. I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. But let me tell y'all this. Let me tell y'all this. 
The reason why I want to hang out with Jesus, I want to hang out with Jesus. Because Jesus is the only person that I know who can multiply by the body. So you ain't not going to come You ask me to divide it, and when I divide it, it becomes less and less and less. But when you ask Jesus to divide it, so he multiplies it as he divides it. So when he divides it, somehow his man makes more. Put your hands together for God in this place. Oh, God, put your hands together for God in this place. So give me, give me a clean heart. Come on, y'all know the song.
If you're here today, we invite you to step out of your seat, make your way up. You can even be here today and you need prayer. We've got folks standing out right now that will stand and pray and intercede for you right now. Amen. Isn't that awesome? Isn't that awesome? Amen. Stand up along the building. Come on, come on. Come on, is there one today? Come on, is there one? He will give you bread to life. New life.
go there, you just sit tight. And just sit tight. He said, leave me the message, stay. He said, the good day is stay. Amen. Amen. Uh, they're asking that no, that uh, no one go downstairs before 1 o'clock if you can help it. I understand we got a couple restaurants up here, restaurants downstairs. Uh, but they are in some preparation downstairs for the meal, the pre pads, amen. Not the re pads, the, the pre pads. <laughs> uh, I'm just trying to make it make sense. The pre pads. So, this is the first time I've ever had a pre pad. So, that's dinner before the service. But praise God, we thank this family for being so coordinated and organized and with the spirit of excellence. We praise God for you. So at the benediction, we're not only going to pray a prayer of benediction, but we also pray a prayer for the meal that we'll have downstairs. Amen. But we're going to, we want y'all to hold. We have to be to do until one o'clock. It's offering time. <laughs> Amen. What a pastor give shall be given to you. Good measure, press down, shake it together, and run it over. Say, men and women, give in your bosom. Remember, it is not about equal giving. It is about equal sacrifice. All of us right. had a day that we had to go and do like this. Amen? Amen. Amen. But praise God, if you have something to give, then be a cheerful giver. Amen? Amen. Be a cheerful giver. Remember, we have multiple ways of giving here at CNBC. If you desire to give by debit card, not credit card, but by debit card, you can do so to my left, to your right, there's a kiosk right outside that door, and you can give by debit card. Many of you all have already done that. If you desire to give from your seat, you can do so if you have a smartphone by going to CNBC, Christ Missionary Baptist Church, CNBCINDY.org. Right up there. Go there, hit the give link, and you can give right from your seat. Amen. For the rest of us who desire to walk around, they're going to give us a walk of music. We're going to get ready to go. Y'all ready? Here come the muscles. Let's go. Come on. Amen. 